Hi guys. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm going to be using my koozie from Maryland and I'm going to be drinking. Look how beautiful this can is. This is razzed with real raspberries. It's Jackie O's Raz Wheat Wheat Ale with raspberries. So let's just, this is the last whoop, can of beer I have left from Yellow Springs. Mmm, yes. Guess what else I still have left from Yellow Springs? Yellow Springs was a couple weeks ago now, and I don't know how long Jello lasts, but it still tastes fine, and in my head, I feel like tequila will make anything last. That's what we're doing. Come join the show. We have quite the ride today. Hey guys, Chevy Rel here. Did you grab your drink? Are you ready for this? You guys sent so much love on the sheep tapestry or regarding the sheep tapestry. You rock so hard. If you don't know the sheep tapestry, it's a big tapestry, it's this, that I tie-dyed and unveiled on the last episode. I do wanna show you this, look. First off, if you haven't seen this, go watch the last episode. I unveil it pretty much at the beginning or there will be pictures later. I have all these things to say. First, a bunch of you had asked me to do a tutorial on this. I am going to say thank you so much for all the flipping love that you showed me on this, but I am going to direct you to Raya's tie-dye. She's linked below. I have literally watched all of her videos. I messaged her that this was my plan and asked her if she thought it was doable and she said yes and pointed me into the direction of her turtle tapestry or turtle shirt, one, one or the other, her turtle tie-dye. I learned everything that I did on this from her. There's no way I could do it any better than she does. She's the tie-dye professional for sure. I just follow directions real good. Every fiber festival that this goes to, I am going to embroider the name of it and the dates or the years that we're there. Speaking of the wool gathering, my plan is to do two episodes. I am going to talk about Yellow Springs, the wool gathering, which is in Yellow Springs, Ohio. I am going to talk about that in its own episode or its own, I'm going to put that on as an extra. So it won't be an episode number. It's just going to be, you know, the wool gathering at Yellow Springs. And that is for a couple reasons. First, I don't want this episode to be two hours long. And second, I know that not everybody enjoys seeing that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna talk about Yellow Springs on this episode. I mean, some things are gonna come up obviously, but we're just gonna do this the regular old, regular old episode. How's that sound? Another quick thing, we will be in Cincinnati Halloween weekend. So if anyone is down in that area, we will be hitting some breweries. The main reason we are going down there is because there is a marathon down there that Dan is running. He's doing a half marathon, which I think is only like 13 miles, right? Is a full marathon 20 only. I mean, I could barely run down to the stop sign. <laughs> if you see me running, something's chasing me and you need to run too. For Dan, it's only 13 miles. That is on October 31st, which is Sunday. Somewhere in that weekend, we will be hitting breweries. I really, really want to go to Ryan Geist. And um, if y'all want to come out and have a beer, hit me up closer to that time. Tell me what yarn shops I should go to or look up while I'm down there. I know that they exist. So I have not done any research on that yet. I mean, it's like a month away, but I wanted to plant that seed in case any of y'all live local. 
Dan did run a sprint triathlon last weekend. He got 22nd overall. I can't remember how many people were in it, way more than that. And he got third in his age group. I know some of you like to follow Dan and his, his progress. What I'm wearing, because I will forget, this is my VBAC tee by, I can't remember who, the reason it's called the V-back tee is because it has a V-back. You can also wear it with the V in the front. And this is with my Halloween minis advent kit from Trilogy Yarns. And I love it. Let's get on to the FOs. So only the OGs are going to, first, like, this is what I'm dealing with. That's why I'm cockeyed over. Somebody's gonna ask about my sheep. I'm covering the stupid electrical plug. That's yarn on my sheep. Isn't he cute? Uh, Dan made that for me for the bathroom. Usually toilet paper's on it. But he built this like cool new shelf thing for me in the bathroom that now that's what the toilet paper, like the extra rolls of toilet paper are on. So I moved the sheep in here and now he holds yarn or she holds yarn, it holds yarn, whatever. Anywho, the OGs will remember this first FO. Do you guys remember a long, long time ago when I was knitting a Hermione's Everyday Sock? I finished it. Uh-huh. I finished it. Them. Ta-da! This is... Excuse me, sir. This is Mad Fuzzy Yarn made in Maine. I mean, the sheep are grown in Maine, the yarn's dyed in Maine, it's milled in Maine, everything in Maine. She'll be linked below. It is non-superwash, very sheepy. These are going to be super warm. The reason that it took me forever is because these were my car, my car socks. And I basically only knit on them when I was like in a waiting room or waiting for a train, something like that. I cannot remember the name of it. Okay, this is Marta, Mad Fluff, it's gonna get blown out over there. Mad Fluffy Yarn, Mad Fluffy, Mad Fuzzy, Mad Fuzzy Yarn, and this is Sister Golden Hair Surprise colorway. And this is her Pretty Tough, which is 80% East Frisian wool, 20% Starfire nylon. And there is just a kiss of the Starfire in there. So FO number one, shot break. Mm. FO number two, are my Get Shorty socks by Irene Designs, who is also one of the three hosts of the Three Ply podcast. And here these are, aren't they cute? The cuff has a really neat detail on it. I've never done this heel before. It's called the strong heel. I loved the toe. I've never done a toe construction like that. It's sort of like a hat topper, you know, like it, you decrease down to just a few stitches and then Kitchener, it was really neat. I've never done a toe like that. I love it so far. Um, I have not worn them yet, but I have put them on my feet and I really like the way they fit. This is the Come Together colorway by The Creative Obsession. That is Carrie. She does The Creative Obsession. Love that. Creative Obsession podcast. She is no longer dyeing yarn. So unless you have this in your stash or find it in a D stash, you're not gonna get it, I'm sorry. Next, Dan Socks. Some of you probably don't remember these. This is the Brood X colorway by Johnny Bow, which can be, I was gonna say, which can be found at. He's a small batch dyer, so you're not gonna get this again. But his yarn, if you like this, can be found at Knitty Bow Fiber Co. It'll be linked below. Some of you may know him as the husband of Aquila from a Lefty Knitter podcast. I had her crank these into tubes and all I did was the toe. 
So that's why, or no, she, no, I, excuse me, I take it back. These weren't tubes. She did the cuff and the heels. So then all I had to do is cut in for the toe. It was awesome. If you go there, she does a cranking service and that is an option. It was awesome. So if you guys ever think about doing that, if you have skeins in your stash that you're like, eh, I like it, but I don't want to knit it. Not that that was how this was, but Dan wanted socks and I knew that he'd get them a lot faster if I had them cranked. So we got them cranked. He will be very excited to get this. As soon as John dyed this, he wanted it because of the cicadas. Brood X are the cicadas. And now he gets to add another pair of socks to his drawer. I mean, is anyone keeping track? That's three pairs of socks. Three. I mean, the one is sort of kind of cheating, but still, three pairs of socks. My next F.O. is my Urban Nomad bag. Do y'all remember this? Robin from the Knitting Coop. That is a yarn shop in Salem, Virginia. She also used to do tries. So she's all about like when Dan's doing tries. I love it. It's so, I mean, that's just like a whole nother world, right? So she's so sweet, like follows him on his races and stuff. But she sent me a leather strap. She used to do Renaissance stuff and had leather. Then I got these super cool rivets just off Amazon and I like poked the holes or whatnot. And then I got these super cool, I'll link this stuff if you guys want it too. I got these super cool spring loaded rings so you can take them out to wash the bag. For those of you that I met at Yellow Springs, you have already seen it. It's a nice hip bag. That's how long I kept my fringes. I absolutely love it. But isn't it cute? This is called the Urban Nomad Bag by Jess Kopam. Kopam. It is a free pattern. It's linked below. My last FO, I mean, I have some hella FOs. None of them are big FOs, but like that's a lot of FOs, yeah? Okay, so here is, I gotta get ready for this FO. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? It's my Musselberg hat. Hold on. Yeah, look how cute it is. Okay, so this is my hand spun, and this is Wool Fiend, linked below, spun like butter. And this is the Before Dawn colorway, I believe. You guys, first off, it's hot as Hades in here. Second off, this was so flippin' addicting. Addicting, absolutely addicting. So addicting that my first whip is another one because I bound this off and immediately had to cast on another one because it's, it was, it, it's just so much fun. It has totally taken place, taken the place of sock head hat for me. And the people to blame are Kristen and Maddie from the We Share Needles podcast and Jen from the Crafted Pearl podcast because they're having a knit along. This is it. This is a paid for pattern by Isolde Teague. It is a $7.16 pattern. Some of you will say, which this might sound bitchy, but you know, I, I say it like it is. Some of you might say $7.16 for a hat pattern. Yeah, worth every penny. In, in, in my opinion, in my opinion. So here's how it works. Are you ready for it? What? <laughs> so if you have hand spun, that like I love this yellow so I like wearing that on the outside because I love that yellow chunk in there even the dyer was like wow I don't remember that having so much yellow well it doesn't have a lot of yellow it's just there was like this fun chunky stripe right so you start it and you knit like a big knit 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 knit, knit decrease 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 and then you just fold it in on itself and you have your hat I mean, it's amazing. 
So double, it's double. You can have the, I call them just the tip pads. <laughs> Hold on, let me show you again. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Get it? Just the tip, Pin pinch the tip, pinch the tip. <laughs> I'm 12. This is why people are like, unsubscribe. <laughs> Anyway, I love it. Or, okay, wait, 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 wait. You don't have to do pinch the tip. You can do roll the brim. And then it's super warm, right? Because you have four, you have four layers of knit there. I love it. This is an adult medium. It is dense. I can't remember what size needles I knitted on. I Did I say on the last episode? I may have said on the last episode. But here's how the pattern works, and this is why it is so worth it. It is all knit, all knit. It is like the biggest stockinette sock. It's amazing. It's just knit, 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 knit. And then while you're knitting it, like say I'm only halfway, right? Your ball's in here. So you don't even need a project bag. Like I just walked around and had my yarn ball in the hat. It like holds its own yarn ball. The reason that it is so cool and so worth it is any weight yarn, any gauge. All you do is you start at, 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 at the nipple. I'm full of 12 year old jokes. You start here, you knit for like so long, you count your gauge, like how many stitches you have per inch and pick what size you want to knit. And it tells you, it tells you like how, how to like it give, it's like magic. It's magic. Now I will say an adult medium, I tend to knit my hats big because I don't like them snug. Then what happens is they're too big. A lot of mine are too big. And I like them to where it's not like on my head. But what happens is then it like pulls, it like falls down here. And I don't like that. So that's why I picked the adult medium. This is super springy. I so springy. And I like it, but this sounds like a good segue to whips. So for my second one, I chose to do an adult large just to see the difference in fit. Is anyone new to the fornicating skeleton bag? If you are, you haven't been here long, that's okay. This is a naughty knitting sack by Katie who lives in Cumming, Georgia. I need to name this the 12 year old. 12 year olds have the best jokes. <laughs> this is a naughty knitting sack. Now, most people, but I'm not most people, have this on the outside and then they just flash this. For those of you who watch Needles at the Ready, Kevin totally has one that has penises on the inside and all he does because he's a good boy, he's like, see it? <laughs> and I'm like, these are fornicating skeletons. The reason that I'm flashing my fornicating skeleton, oh, Katie will be linked down below, Naughty Knitting Sacks. She has other naughty things in her bags as well. And we have a perpetual coupon code. I'll put it here. I have to dig for it. I can't ever remember it off the top of my head. The reason that I'm flashing my skeletons is because it's Halloween and I needed a Halloween bag. And this is what I have as a Halloween bag. And the reason is because I am knitting with some very Halloween-y yarn. Look at that. Okay, so this is the large. Now it's on, uh, whatchamacallit, here comes Dan. It's on 16 inch needles. And that's what it looks like until, I see, I love this. I love this like zigzag. And I was so excited to see how this yarn was going to pull pool or flash or whatever, but it's just a spiral, which is fine. That totally fine. Oh gosh. The neighbor dogs are going nuts, which means ditto's going nuts. And I have it in my knitting notions. Again, she'll be linked. Halloweeny. It says be a witch. 
in a world full of princesses in my yarn condom. And then this yarn, do I have the tag in here? I suck at this game. Stand by. Not that it matters very much because, oh, sorry, crinkle, crinkle. Because this dyer is no longer dying, but this is happy fuzzy yarn. Sorry, I'm covering up my mouth, but if I put it over here, this is what happens. Like my manicure guys, we went to a party and the theme, I mean, does this look like me at all? Absolutely not. But the theme was American Pride and I, I'll put a picture right here. Don't you look cute? Happy Fuzzy Yarn. This is the deepest, the deepest of deep stash. And the reason that it's the deepest of deep stash is because I purchased the, hi babe. Make them real deep. <laughs> That's For what everyone doing. playing at home. Okay. If you had cold food, where would you store it? If you had cold food that was intended to stay cold in order to stay fresh, where would you store it? In the refrigerator. Really? Yeah. Then why are you storing them on the kitchen counter? Because I know exactly what you're thinking. Dan asked me to thaw out our dinner tonight, and that's exactly... Ditto! And that's exactly what I'm doing. But because Dan tracks all of his food, Mr. Triathlete, I didn't throw the label away. So he thinks that the carton on the table has food in it, but it doesn't. So there's one in the fridge and one in the freezer? No. There's two in a fridge? No. no. There's two in a freezer? There. Just trust me. Okay. Same question. <laughs> Different box. Okay. If you had food that was intended to be cold, where would you store it? In the refrigerator. Then why did you leave it on the front porch in the sun? I didn't see any food in the front po on the front porch. Oh, there it is. You guys, we get that home chef stuff. We're trying those. So good. So good. I don't know that I would do it for a family, but for the two of us. Oh. God, that'd be 50, 60 bucks a minute. Yeah, it'd be really expensive for a whole family. But it's just the two of us. And you guys know that, you know, the smoke detector is the song of my people. So on days that I have to cook, I need all the help I can get. And they make it so easy. Hashtag not sponsored home chef. <laughs> Anybody still here? <laughs> Hello. Editing Chev is here. I got interrupted and never finished my thought. Why that yarn is the deepest of deep stash is because I purchased it at the very first fiber festival I ever went to in Greencastle, Indiana. It was the very first time that I walked in and was like, <laughs> so it, it's been with me a while. Back to this muscle bird. <sighs> this yarn came from Happy Fuzzy Yarn. She does not dye anymore. The colorway is called Halloween. It has been chilling in my stash because I wanted to do Halloween socks. And I knew that one day I would make Halloween socks. And this year I'm like, yes, because last year I did this, you know, I opened these things and I'm like, okay, well this year is finally the year that I can do, like I need something Halloween-y, right? So I pull this out and it is 75% wool, 25% nylon. Now it says machine wash in cool water, tumble dry low or lay flat to dry. This does not feel like super wash to me. I did not test it. There is a trick to figure out. I mean, I'll, I'll link it below. I'll find how you do it and link it below. I did not test it. I was just so excited. I was kind of like, well, if it can't be socks, it can be another muscle burger. <laughs> because I had just bound that one off. I just kind of saw it as the universe saying, hey, I know that you always wanted this to be socks, but I think it should be a hat instead. I wanted to use my naughty knitting socks, but if you are a walker and a knitter, which is what I did the whole time, basically I was in Yellow Springs and I just totally ripped all these stitches out. Stand by. You just walk just like that. See, your ball's in there. It's a center pull ball. 
and you just walk in it and walk in it and walk in it and talk and it's great and it just, you know, it's like a ball sack. It's like a walking ball sack until you turn it into a hat. Y'all know that I do not knit the same shit twice very often. And I'm gonna knit Cole one for Christmas. I've decided I'm gonna knit Cole one for Christmas. Back to the $7.16 pattern. It comes in all the sizes. Kids to, Amer to, to American. Kids to adult, I think, extra large. Oh, well right here, here's the picture of it. See, she has it folded up. And then Yzolda, that's her, she has. See, now hers is bigger. It doesn't look like a just the tip hat or pinch the tip. Just the tip's a game. Some of you know, some of you know. I actually just learned what that was not very many years ago, which I can't believe I'm admitting to the internet. But pinch the tip, hers is bigger, which is what I'm hoping this one will be large wise. But it goes from baby, toddler, adult, small, medium, large, extra large. This one was a medium and I'm doing a large. So then there's also an extra large. And you all know that I make my brother a hat every year for Christmas too, except he likes more of a beanie. I wonder if he'd like this. I could shorten it. I'm just gonna make everybody, you get a Musselberg, you get a Musselberg. Oh, and Leslie, here's another thing. Leslie from Not Quite Enough Yarn said that Musselberg is a place across the pond and they pronounce it Musselboro, like Edinburgh. But we say Musselberg. So now, like, what's right? What's right? Oh, and, and, oh my gosh. Okay, so if you guys want this, did they give her, I could be making this up. For some reason, I was thinking that they had a coupon code for it. Definitely worth checking out. I mean, it's worth every bit of the $7.16 pattern. I'm just saying. Go watch Maddie and Kristen. If you like this kind of batshit crazy energy, which Maddie and Kristen, you know I say with all the love in the world, you should go watch them. <laughs> Except they drink iced coffee and I drink iced beer. What's next? <laughs> my coil basket because I still have my pile of yarn condoms over here without a place to live. But I've been having so much fun doing all this other stuff that my basket kind of got pushed off on the back burner. You haven't seen the blue yet, right? If you're new here, this is a coil basket. I have a tutorial. Maybe I'll try and remember to put the little eye here. It is definitely linked down below. You saw it like down here somewhere. I mean, it was, I don't think the blue was on there. My plan is I am going to finish another coil of blue and then I am going to go in with the yellow. Then I'm going to finish it with the pink. So we have the blue and the pink, a solid coil of blue. This will be blue and yellow. Then I'll do a solid coil of the yellow and then I'll do pink all the way up. I think, at least, you know me, I could change my mind a hundred times, but that's what I'm thinking thus far. And I'm, I'm just gonna do it until I'm completely out of this. So however tall it is, that's how tall the basket's gonna be. If you wanna know more about any of that stuff, I've talked about it in past episodes. Something's tickling me. Do you guys ever like feel hair on you and think it's a spider? And then you look down and it's just hair. I mean, I'm not scared of spiders or anything, but don't come at me, bro. Like, stay in your lane. You stay over there, I'll stay over here, we're good. Don't crawl on me. Unless I, like, see you, unless you don't scare me, and then I'm like, oh, it's cute. Yeah, no, don't don't come at me without me being ready. Okay, next is my Lady Charming. I don't remember where this was the last time you saw it. I think I had barely started the sleeve. Here's the Lady Charming. I put this on. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you see that shadow? The light, the shadow light? I totally have one of these things covering. If it wasn't in the window right there, it would be all over my face right here. That's hilarious. So that's the top of that. Anyway, this is the Lady Charming. It will block out longer, I really, really hope. 
Bubba's, you're so loud. You're so loud. I'm pretty sure... Have I started the sleeve? I don't remember. I don't think I had knit any of the sleeve. So I think I've gotten that far. Now, it fits fine. It fits fine. But I do wish that I would have gone up a size on the sleeve. I mean, it might block out. And like I said, it fits fine. I just wish that it... <sighs> snug is the wrong word. Like, it is definitely negative ease. And I just wish I would have gone up a size, that's all. I wonder how many of the cables I twisted the wrong way. It doesn't look like any, that's good. Super fast knit, this is on size 10s. This yarn, it is Briar Rose on her Joyful Base. So the Joyful Base is disconnected. Disconnected. The Joyful Base is discontinued. She also doesn't have color names. This was Deep Stash as well. Her color palette is this. You're not going to get those bright, like, which you know I love, like the neons. And it, or her colorways are very, like, earthy. Think woods, mushrooms. I just love her booth so much. It's so visually pleasing. Like, it's one of those booths that you walk in and you're like, oh, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> like, it's just super cool. I mean, she has these big, what are those? Um, and these might not be what she has, but they're like apple baskets or bushel baskets. Is that what they are? Like, she has these, just these big baskets with these yarn babies falling out. And oh my gosh, I love her booth. I always have. I've seen her multiple times. I'm excited to say that I have some of her yarn. So go check her out. She will be linked below. And it's in my awesome bag, my owl bag. Who made this again? Does it have a tag? It doesn't have a tag. This was gifted to me. Oh, yes, it does. So, so Bernie. This was a gift. So, so Bernie. Look how fun that tag is. And it matches. It, it matches. And I'm not even matchy matchy, but it makes me so happy. How many times have I shown you this? This is my Katie did bag, and I can't ever show you because you need to set it down, but see what you do is you pull it down and it's a bucket. And my tapestry vest is in it. You guys are gonna be so sick of seeing this. This is the tapestry vest. It's a free pattern by Skano. As you can see, it's basically, I've wadded it into a million pieces. So you, well actually, let me show you this one. Okay, I can't show you that one. Where's the rest of the pattern? Found it, it was on the ground. I altered this. These are in my Leela Styles yarn condoms. And this is yarn that Johnny Bow dyed. I sent this to him, it was bare yarn. And this was on his, so a lefty knitter. John is her husband, he dyes yarn. He is also, so his videos, ditto. Thank you. His videos are on her channel. And he dyed this yarn, if you would like to see him, on take seven. So we have a mohair. This is Swish, I think. Knit pick Swish. And this is Stroll? Stroll, maybe. Fingering. And it's in my my hippy dippy and my 80s cartoons. Go, go, get your arms. It lives in my Katie did bag. Bees! 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 Bees oh. to the star! Bees everywhere! God, they're huge! They're ripping my flesh off! I altered this pattern. It calls to cast on 190 stitches. I am gifting this to a friend who's very knit worthy. She is tiny. If I cast on 190 stitches, it would like fit around her five times. I cast on 150 stitches, so it's gonna be shorter on her. But this is the construction. So you do two panels, and then the neck somehow and the back somehow. I haven't gotten that far. But I, the last time you saw it, I was into the second panel. I have finished both panels. So here is one. And this is not hard. 
it was counting and it took brain space that I didn't find enjoyable. Like I said, was it hard? I just didn't find it enjoyable. So I am very, very glad to be done with both panels. And here's the second one. They are not the same. I totally switched up the yarn um, because I used three colors and the pattern called for six colors and I do not like them matching because like I said, see previous statement, I'm not matchy matchy. The, the little whatever these are called, I don't even know what they're called. They're different on both panels, so they're not gonna match. So the next thing I do is, let me actually look. So next you do the back and then you work the front trim and the collar. But I don't, those are forms, half form and full form. I don't have to do those anymore. So this will probably go way faster because I don't have to do those things. I hope that I'm not totally discouraging you guys from doing it. You might totally love doing them. I did not. If you guys want to knit that and you want to do the shorter version, I had Dan, Mr. Engineer Man, figure out where to do the half form and full forms, like what stitch count to do on 150 stitches instead of 190 stitches. So if you want those numbers, I would be happy to give them to you. I'm hoping the next time you see that it is complete. It would be amazing. I want to get it to her so she can flip and wear it. But I'm just picturing it over like, like a turtleneck or something. She's gonna look so cute. I just know she is. Next, oh my gosh. Is this my last whip? This is my last whip. It's embroidery. I have it on my little, you like, can I do this and not flash you? So you put it, nope, can't do it. <laughs> you put this thing under your leg and stitch on it like this, which it's falling out because I undid it. I mean, you never know what bits and bobs you're gonna see here on Chevy Roll stuff. <laughs> oh, here again, you OGs will recognize this. It is my drop stitch sampler by Rebecca Rehnquist. Not that any of you are gonna remember this because I don't remember it, but I can tell you the latest that I did was like this stuff, and this, like those satin stitches. I, I am not a great embroiderer. Upon retrospect, I should have, is retrospect the right word? I should have done these at a diagonal instead of like an east to west, but that's okay. That's all right, I'm fine with it. I will tell you the reason that I busted this out is because, okay, how do I wanna, you know me, every story I tell is way longer than it needs to be, but that's just how I roll. Barbara from the Flame and Fiber podcast, you guys have heard me talk about her before. She has a daughter named Christy, and Christy has a floss tube. And for those of you who are only knitters or only crocheters, floss tube is like embroidery cross stitch. When Barbara said that her daughter had a floss tube, I of course went and checked her out. Even though I don't stitch a whole lot, I, I do like it and I do get a hankering for it. And once I start a project, it seems like I am more prone to finish a cross stitch than I am like that. I don't remember what episode it is, but Paige the Framer framed that for me. It's a little crystal ball and it says you're fucked on it. <laughs> because that's so my style. But I tend to finish cross stitches faster than embroidery, purely based on this sampler right here. I, and I think it's because I'm a little overwhelmed by embroidery stitches. Cross stitching is like mowing the grass. It's all rows of X's. Whereas embroidery, for me, you guys might not think this, but embroidery has all these different, you know, like, and that's why I got this stitch sampler, drop cloth sampler, is because I wanted to learn, right? But it, it's, it's, I think it's too much brain space for me. I mean, I can bust out some color work like nothing, but this kind of stuff, I don't know. So I have to like chain stitch, French knots. Now I got, I got French knots down. 
I am awesome at French knots now. Don't know why, but I'm real good at it. But there are some of these like satin stitches. I can back stitch and I can do a running stitch. These stars, I suck at the stars. I'm not good at the coral knots. Couching, I'm all right. The feathers, these things, I get hung up every time on those things, whatever those things are called. Buttonhole, I don't know. It's more brain space, I feel like, than I need. Anyway, that was a really, really flipping long explanation. I love the way it looks and I love watching it. So I watch Christy because I started watching Christy because I enjoy watching the stitchy stuff, even though I don't do it often. And she's Barbara's daughter. And Barbara's just, you know, some of my people. I can just tell we like we'd be besties if we live near each other. So I started watching Christy and you guys. First off, she's super cool and I wish she lived close. She makes amazing things and she is a medieval historian for her job not like as a character in a movie because those are the only medieval historians I know like National Treasure with Nicolas Cage I'm sure there was a medieval historian in that movie <laughs> she's a medieval historian in real life she's a doctor she's writing a book and finds the time to do this stuff so I'm throwing her out there because I watch her do all these things and I wanted to bust out my drop cloth sampler. So last year, you know how we have those temperature, temperature patterns where, you know, there's a yarn color for, and I don't even know, is a few degrees, like is it 80 to 85, 85 to 90? It might even be less than that, but like, between certain degrees is a certain color. And then every day you put like a line on it. And that is, uh, the gal from Very Pink Knits did some, some hanging tapestries in her house, like multiple years. And it's really cool to see the years beside each other, just to see, you know, like how the different colors are beside each other. Anyway, it was awesome, loved them. Well, Christy did a pattern last year that's a bookshelf. Her and her mom do it together, Barbara does it with her, and she did an embroidery and a cross stitch pattern. And I was kind of bummed out because I missed out on it last year and I love it. Like it's so much fun to watch them do it. And you don't have to do it every day. You can do it like by week or if you get behind a few days, like do, do a few books on the shelf, whatever. And then she has these little knickknacks for the shelves. So you can, it's like a, it's like a pattern pack, I guess, where it's just like a bunch of little knickknacks and then you can choose what knickknack you want on your shelves to stitch. So this year, Christy, which who I didn't even know that we were cool like that. I mean, I comment on her videos, but I didn't know she had any idea who I was. And she asked me if she could use, she said that she had an idea that was kind of born between me and her mom because Barbara likes a good cocktail too. October 1st, which it will be after October 1st, which is why I feel like it's okay for me to talk. Well, she met, she, it's on her Instagram. This is where I got it. October 1st, she is releasing not only her bookshelf that she released last year, but she's also releasing a grab yo drink. What? She's releasing a grab yo drink. It's shelves of drinks. I'm so excited. So I'm doing it for 2022. I'm doing it. That's kind of why I got all excited to bust out my drop cloth sampler. I need to do it some more. I have all these things going at once. That is my last whip. I am not going to talk about my Forest Park cardigan. I want you guys to see it when like stuff happens. I mean, if I knit 10 rows on something, then whatever. Next is enabling. My plan, do I have a plan? The question of the plan is what is the plan? My merchandise. So I said that I was gonna get it up on Etsy. Oh, I think I have it. I said I was gonna get it up on Etsy after like Yellow Springs and everything. My plan is... <laughs> is 
let's say this, the day that this goes up, I will make my merchandise live the next day on Etsy at noon, Eastern time. I will also post on Instagram, but I know that not all of you are on Instagram and I wanna give everyone a fair shot to get it. Not that I think it's gonna like blow out, sell out immediately, but I do know that last time there were quite a few people that didn't hear about it because I only said, you know, I said when it was going live on Instagram only and the people who didn't have Instagram didn't see when I posted it, whatever. Editing Chevis here. Yeah, we got it. So I'm going to have the stickers, the Grebio Drank stickers, the koozies, and the enamel pins. Then I have Happy Mail. So Robin from Knit and Coop, because she's extra, sent me a Knit and Coop pin. This is her yarn shop, Salem, Virginia. If y'all are down there, stop in and say, hey, Robin. And they dye their own yarn there as well. And she sent me a skein of it. Isn't that cute? It's a chicken coop, but it's a knitting coop. And this is their Enduro Sock Red Wine and Sunshine. It's like she knows me or something. Red Wine and Sunshine. And this is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 437 yards. It is so pretty. And if you spill your red wine on it, nobody would ever know. She's the one that gave me the leather strap for my bag as well. She's so sweet. I debated on whether to show this in the Yellow Springs video because I, get, I got to see Robin from Yarn Birds at Yellow Springs. Now, I know Robin. I've met Robin a handful of times. She has, what does she call it? It's so, I want to say Mobile Yarn Boutique, but I might have that wrong. Let me look. Mobile Yarn Boutique. And she's out of Columbus, Ohio. So she's in my neck of the woods quite a bit. She was on Christy Glass. I will link that episode below. You can see her bus, her van, her bus van. I don't know what it is. It's amazing. And it's air conditioned. So if you ever see her at a show, you can pop in there and cool off a little bit. She sent me a bag and this is her logo, Yarn Birds. Oops. And the reason that I'm showing it here is because we went on Saturday and she had something for me and brought it the next day. So she's like, are you coming back to the wool gathering? And we only went the one day. And she's like, okay, what's your address? I have something to send you. I drink, therefore I tink. <laughs> I mean, this is leather. You guys, did she, hold on. The flask is by Shiny Wear Co. on IG. I'll link them. You guys might find this hard to believe, but it's my first flask. I think Dan has one, but this is my, me personally, this is my first flask. Thanks, Robin. Okay, couple more things. See, I'm glad that I am busting out the Yellow Springs because... I mean, wait until you see the gluttony. Michelle, who is the dyer behind the yarn and the bees, sent me yarn. She's from Fort Erie, Canada. She sent me three skeins of yarn and one came with a mini. I mean, she gave me a sample of all the things, right? Uh, Fort Erie, Ontario. So this is Lacey which is her platinum sock, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. It reminds me of like a beach or stones. Oh, I, just, I love it. It's great. And then this is a good tonal. It's called speck, speckled. Why can't I talk? I've, I've had two jello shots and half a beer. I think it's because I'm trying to talk too fast. This is also her platinum fingering, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. And this color is her speckled mallard. Here's her, what her uh, label looks like. And then this one is super interesting. 
This is a sock set, rainbow, sherbet, and chocolate. So we have some neons. Look at those neons. And then chocolate heels, toes, and cuffs. I mean, it's like a freaking Sunday. I still haven't gotten any sherbet, you guys. Remember I said I wanted, I wanted some sherbet because I was talking about it. And this makes me want it even more. I am in love with this one. This lacy, I am head over heels in love with it. I am going to put these in for prizes because for those of you who are still here, see, this is where prizes happen, people. The ones who stick around, I'm telling you. First, I am, I think I'm at like 9,700 subscribers. I mean, I am 300 subscribers away from 10,000. 10,000. Now, 10,000 people don't watch every episode, but still, 10,000 people know who I am. <laughs> like, that's, that's, or know that I exist. That's just mind boggling to me. So I did a thousand subscriber giveaway when I hit a thousand because I could not flip and believe that a thousand people found me. And here we're coming up on 10K. It just blows my mind. So for the 10K giveaway, we're having a 10K giveaway. I mean, we have to, right? And it could be a long time from now. I mean, 300 people is a lot of people. But I mean, I'm going to give out hella prizes. That needs to be, I think, because I have had tons of donations. Well, not tons, but I, I have quite a few prizes in the prize box. And I feel like it should be at 10,000, a prize extravaganza. So that's my plan. If and when I make it to 10K, which I'm closer to than not, we're gonna have hella giveaways, okay? So that brings me to the next giveaway. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about, Katie did, you know, Katie did, bucket bag, bees. She just came out with her Halloween bags. And this is the one I picked. So cool. Now, this is a first faux leather strap and faux leather bottom. I mean, I love it. And I love drawstrings. I have a bunch of project bags with zippers and I use them, but my favorite are the drawstrings or the knotted, the knotted ones. And that's because I zip my yarn up in zipper bags. Every time never fails, ends up in cussing. It's just something that I do. So I love a good drawstring bag. I also love a faux leather handle. She has multiple Halloween bags. I hope they're still there by the time you see this. I mean, I think she just came out with them, so she's still gonna have some. This is her, I'm gonna mess it up. It's Day of the Dead fabric. I wanna say it right. So I was watching Time Weaver, Nicole Time Weaver. Do you guys watch her? I've talked about her quite a few times. She's a New Yorker, but lives in Spain and is bilingual. And I am so jealous of anyone who is bilingual because it just boggles my mind. I wanna, I wanna say it the right way. Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday and it is Dia de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos. Help me, is it okay? Dia de los Muertos. The Muertos is the hard part for me. Like I really had to practice that. Muertos. Dia de los Muertos. And it's so pretty and I'm butchering it. I know I am, but I tried. Isn't it pretty? So she has a bunch of other things too. Now, the reason that it looks like something's in it is because there is something in it. Yes, I have my Halloween Musselberg, but I'm like, well, I wanna use my new bag, so I need some more Halloween stuff. Here's some deep stash, not deep stash, but it's been in the stash for a minute. I'm finally going to do my underwing mitts, which these are the underwing mitts. I got gifted this pattern in a fiber share 
box. Kelly was my fiber share partner and she gifted me the pattern and I need to find it. It's like an actual physical printed out pattern and I need to look for it. But I felt like it was Halloween-y. I purchased this yarn, which is Black Pearl and La Perla and it's La Jolla, Ba La Jolla. I purchased it specifically for the underwing mitts. I don't know how much yardage it calls for, but I was also gifted, do you guys watch the Woolies podcast? Another one of my faves, Brie and Haley. Haley gifted me the Corvids 19 cowl. Look how cute that is. By B Harper, is that right? It'll be linked. It says a disyarning design. So this pattern set, which I can't believe an entire cowl would only be 200 yards. Let me look. Yeah, two colors of sport slash fingering weight yarn, 200 yards. So I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers that I can get this and the fingerless mitts out of it. And the underwings, there's a hat that kind of matches it that I was gonna do too, but I really want this more because I wanted to make it with it. Like I'm all about the Halloween-y things. So that brings me up to the giveaway. It's gonna be one of those sneaky YouTube comment giveaways because I think they're so much fun. Are you ready for it? I don't know how many I'm going to draw, but I learned my lesson from the dessert thing because all that did was make me gain 10 pounds reading it and wanting all the tiramisu. Your challenge should you choose to accept it for a Halloweeny prize, right? I have Halloweeny prizes. Well, I have these yarn yarn thing. Yeah, these for sure. These for sure from Knitting Notions. So at least two people, and then I have the stitch the stitch thread, and maybe I'll have some other things. I'll look I'll look in the prize pack because, like I said, I I got I got hella prizes. Anyway, this is what you do in. The comments, don't say giveaway because you're not supposed to do that. I'm just totally copying off everyone else because everyone says don't say giveaway, whatever that means. And when other people read it, they're like, why are all these people saying this? And it's because they didn't stick around to this point. I want to know your favorite Halloween time book or movie. Doesn't have to be scary, but I love spooky. I know that like Kevin and Ray, the Needles at the Ready guys, they read The Discovery of Witches every year at Halloween. I did that last year as well. They reread it. Um, I've, I've read it twice now. Maybe I'll do it again. Dracula, I tried Dracula and it made me feel really dumb because I couldn't get into it. Like here is this like classic literature and I, I just, I wasn't in love. You know, I've never read Interview with a Vampire. I mean, I've seen the movie, but you know, the book's always better. So anyway, you tell me what your favorites are. One, one thing. Don't give me a whole paragraph. One thing, your all-time favorite, if you had to pick one. That's it, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around. This was a long one. I am going to now maybe eat and then record the Yellow Springs episode because, wow. What's up? Editing Travis again. Dan and I did record the Yellow Springs video and we will be re-recording it because it's a mess. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed your time here in the stuff room. Hopefully you guys will be interested in the Yellow Springs video. It was a whole lot of fun. And if not, we'll catch you on the next episode later. I almost forgot. If you're still here, like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that heavy horse shit.